Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm excited to bring you this series of painting tutorials that I think will bring you joy, peace, happiness, and learning. What you're seeing now are nine tiny paintings, and I do mean tiny, only two and a half inches by two and a half inches. They all have flowers and happy little bees, which seems to represent a celebration of life and God's creation. In each of the nine lessons, I will give you information as to supplies, techniques, and more. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I would love that. And now it is time for painting number two. Once again, a little two and a half inch by two and a half inch painting. All nine of the paintings were done on this piece of pastel mat, one piece with all nine paintings, and it is water friendly. I use white because I do a watercolor underpainting for each of the nine paintings. The reference images are from the Paint My Photo website, and I share a lot more about that in the first video. I also share my system for creating the layout for all nine paintings. If you want to check that out, go back to video number one in this series. Before beginning, I also wanted to share with you that it's important to protect the paintings that you've already created. Pastel paintings can smudge, so I'm using just some sheets of tracing paper and covering up the areas that won't be painted for this video. And just as in all nine paintings, I will need some water for my watercolor. They all begin with watercolor, and you will see also in the first video, I use a little Arteza watercolor set you'll see me using, and I'm trying to show the colors that I use as well. Here is the reference image, and once again, you'll see it maybe on my iPad while I'm working, but if you want the link to this particular photo, I will have the link in the description of this video. It is from pmp-art.com. I did a basic sketch for almost all nine of the paintings. I think almost all of them. I don't always do a sketch to begin with, but I wanted to kind of get my layout and composition in. And I'm just using a pencil and using a light touch. I do recommend that you have your pencil really sharp when you're doing, especially working on something teeny like this. Now, I am going to let you know in advance, there is a portion of this video that got out of focus and I'm going to replace that footage with a little tutorial for you guys on how to draw and paint flowers more correctly. So just be advised that you're going to get some extra content to replace the content that got out of focus. I think my head got in the way or something, you know, these technical difficulties do happen, but you're still going to get a lot of footage and I think you should be able to recreate this painting just fine. I've zoomed in here for the section on watercolor, and I'm actually going to try to show you these colors I'm using. I know I'm really close up here, but you can see these blues that I'm choosing here. And it's a combination of two different blues I'm using to get the centers of the flower in. Also, too, I know I mentioned my Amazon shop a lot now. It's a really convenient way for you guys to find the products I'm talking about. I do have the Arteza 36 watercolor set in my shop, and uh, it's really more of a convenience for you to find things. You don't necessarily have to buy them from my Amazon shop, but Artez is a nice little watercolor set. I love the little 36 set. It has some nice color choices and it's affordable. Also too, if you're just using watercolor as an underpainting, um, I mean, you don't have to buy the most expensive brands, but it is a uh, an artist grade brand. So as you can see, I'm just kind of dotting in the centers to the flowers, just kind of for a, a gauge of where things are. And now I'm going to choose a background color. I'm using kind of a cool underpainting palette here. All the colors are cooler. This is kind of a turquoise, lighter teal, and uh, I think I use a combination of two teal colors here. But I, in this one, I'm not doing a wet underpainting. I think that's what I did in the first one, where I actually applied water first to the surface, and it creates more of a wash. And so this one, I'm just applying dry. I didn't lay down plain water first for this one. So, but I do have my watercolor quite watery and that's important. I actually have a watercolor beginner uh, tutorial coming soon and I'm gonna share with you guys five things I've learned 
from painting, you know, for a few years with watercolor that I think would be real important for beginner artists. So uh, that's coming up soon. But one of them is what I'm saying right here is uh, make sure you have, water is your friend. That's, I'm going to give you a little um, um, upcoming tip that's going to be in the video. Water is your friend. Plus, I know a lot of my subscribers and visitors to this channel like the impressionistic style and you definitely get more of that feel when you're not afraid to let the water just have fun and explore and I'm definitely finding that watercolor is a great way to do an underpainting to get the beginnings of that impressionistic um, type of work. And this is all real time, by the way, except for the footage when I was sketching it in. I think you're going to really like the little footage that's going to be coming up soon about how to more accurately sketch out the flowers. And um, you see, this is, I talk a lot about art being therapeutic. These nine paintings were definitely therapeutic for me. I found myself not getting overly fussy because they were so small. And I know my patrons are in the process of recreating these paintings. I love seeing what you're doing, patrons. And you guys have done such a great job on the sunflower painting, the very first one. And I know some of you are not doing them quite as small. They don't have to be two inches by two and a half inches by two and a half inches. They can be a little larger. That's fine. So um, do what you can. And um, I love seeing what you do, patrons. So, and if you're not a patron of mine, um, it's a way to support this channel for five dollars a month. Even if you don't, you know, get involved in the painting part of it or the lessons, the extra lessons that my patrons get. But if you do, I love the fact that you guys share your work with me in your homework album, and I get to see it. It's very cool. All right. So, wow. Why am I using that pink color? Interesting, huh? Well, I know that I'm going to have a sky, the ending result anyway, will be kind of blue in the background. And the pink gave a base that's going to give that blue something to play around with and, and be more interesting as uh, I layer the blues on top of it. Now, on this one, I am going to go ahead and give a base of pink to the flowers. These are little, are they cone flowers, echinacea flowers? And they are already going to be pink. So sometimes you'll notice in all these nine paintings, sometimes I choose to use what's called local color, which means the color that you see in the reference image. And sometimes I'll use complementary color. So there's a lot of different strategies for doing an underpainting. And I get that question all the time. Like there's a hard, fast rule to it. It's it's uh, There's a lot of creativity you can have with an underpainting. All right, so now I know this particular flower is going to be the star of the show. I have not even waited for some of the blue that I laid down in the background to dry because I want this to be an underpainting and very impressionistic. So it's okay if it's kind of bleeding and blending into the wet I've already put down. Now, if you were doing a serious or detailed watercolor painting, sometimes you want to wait for the initial layers to dry. But I like my watercolor underpaintings to just be free and really, really loose. And it creates a nice beginning for the pastel application. Almost, I, I like to say, painting outside of the lines. And I say that carefully because you don't want to be so loose and willy-nilly that you lose the structure of the flower and the things that make it inherent um, to a um, correct drawing or core anatomically to that particular flower or tree or whatever you're drawing. But then you can paint outside of the lines. Once you've got the basic bones right, um, you can get a little bit free and fun. And I know this is still the underpainting, so everything is a bit loose, but I've learned over the years to keep in mind that uh, I talk about focal point a lot now because it's been a personal goal of mine to develop stronger focal points. So I keep that in mind as I'm painting to realize, okay, what is the focal point? It's obviously the flower, the big flower. That's one of the focal point strategies. How do you develop? I have a video on five ways to create a focal point, something like that. And one is size. So something is bigger, it's going to be more of a focal point. And another focal point strategy is detail. Uh, so I know that the bee, the flower, they're going to have more detail than the other flowers. And that's it for the watercolor application. It's very basic, very loose and simple. 
And the wonderful thing I always like to say about this pastel mat is it receives watercolor almost as good as watercolor paper and it's already ready for pastels because it's got it's so weird i find it fascinating with this pastel matte surface it doesn't feel gritty to the touch like some other pastel papers it feels rather smooth but it receives layers so you're ready to go with this if you want to do a watercolor underpainting and then apply pastel you're good to go okay you can see what i've done i put down a before this one i put down i think it was the terry ludwig eggplant color it looks black it's really a dark purple but it's a great base that's another focal point strategy is contrast so wherever you want your focal energy you're going to have contrast that just means the difference between lights and darks or a, a a stark difference between lights and darks creates more contrast so that uh, the centers, obviously, of all the flowers are going to be a bit darker. But notice now, why did I pause to do the centers of those background flowers? Notice that's not quite as dark, right? It's because they're not only further away and they're not going to be as dark. That's one thing that happens to value in the distance. You can see that yourself if you're just looking at nature. Things further away, they're just not going to be as dark as the things close up. But also because I don't want them to be the focal point, they're not going to have as much contrast. So there's multiple reasons for some of the decisions that you make. And you know, if you're just getting started, uh, may, this might be the first time you've ever stumbled upon this channel. All of these things are learnable. I always like to say, if you find you're interested in art and you're fascinated by the process, you probably have a gift, a God-given gift, a leaning towards uh, wanting to create like that. And if you do, the rest is really learnable. It's just really strategies and techniques and things that you can learn to do this. All right, you see I'm working. What did I do? I worked darker and gradually the values are getting lighter, okay? So I went with the Terry Ludwig eggplant. I went with kind of a magenta color. Now I'm going with these little red colors. And once again, I apologize for not having the reference image up here, but you can click on the link in the description of this video and see it yourself. It's because it's someone else's photo on uh, Paint My Photo or pmp-art.com. And you are welcome to go look at that while you recreate my painting if you like. My patrons, I'm going to give you a, you know, um, access to the photo real easily in your post. Okay, now what am I grabbing? I'm getting going even lighter in value. It doesn't mean I'm going to go, when I say lighter in value, sometimes I think we have a tendency to go too light too soon. It's still a medium um, value orange, but it's brighter in color. And these little cone flowers, um, notice how all of a sudden they're looking more three-dimensional because I put the dark value down first. I put my eggplant, my magenta, a little bit of that red, wasn't quite as light as that orange I just put down. Um, I grabbed another pastel here. By the way, some of these orangey, reddish pastels I'm using, they're part of the Unison 120 half stick set. I love and I always recommend, I get questions all the time about what's the best set for beginners? Well, I always recommend buy half sticks every chance you get because you get double the pastel colors for your money. If you're brand new, you're first starting out, you don't have a whole lot of pastels. So half sticks are great. The Unison set is great. Unisons are a great brand of pastels. Okay, I better, I better get off of that and tell you what I'm doing. Notice how I've gradually layered from dark to light and now I'm using these little oranges to think of working from the bottom to the top or the base to the surface and you're gradually just layering those little highlights that are on the cone flower once again back to detail and focal point notice the other cone flower tops they don't have the detail of this main flower and that's because I want that to be the focal point they don't need all that detail if you did if you put detail everywhere then you've totally lost your focal point. Now, I did just add a little bit more dark. Why'd I do that? Um, some of them need a little bit more dark for shadow where it's on the opposite side of where the sun is shining. But also, too, back to focal point, I want that flower in the front to have a little bit darker base at that. Um, what is that part of the flower called? Some of you 
um, botanist, is it botanist? <laughs> who, are, who are like into the scientific names of things. Um, tell me um, what that center part of the flower is called. I know there's a scientific name for it. I'm just not thinking of it. All right, so now I'm adding a pink, a kind of a bold, bright pink. I think this is probably a Sennelier pastel that is worn down. I love Sennelier pastels too, by the way. Oh, another point about pastels and beginners. I know when we're beginners, our, we have to be careful of our budget because, I mean, these pastels can get expensive. And sometimes we have a tendency, like I did, I'm raising my hand, to buy cheaper brands. Uh, I really discourage that because you're going to get so frustrated, like I did, because they just don't behave like the more expensive brands of pastels. It really does make that much of a difference. So if you're going to scrimp, I always say scrimp on the surfaces. I have tons of videos on how to um, do it yourself, DIY pastel surfaces. I even have in my Amazon shop a page or a section dedicated to some of the products you can get that kind of um, accompany my videos. So you can play around with making your own surfaces, especially when you're starting. And I still prefer sometimes making my own surfaces, but definitely try to um, get the better pastels. And that doesn't mean you have to get the 120 set. You can start off with a 20 set or a 40 set. And I have videos that show you how to paint with 12 pastels. So as long as you get the right values, um, I have so many videos on the importance of value, you can really create a painting and get going with your pastel art career. So, and again, all of this is learnable. And I have been through every stage that I'm sure most of you guys have been through. That's why I started Monet Cafe, by the way, is because I had such a hard time finding information about pastel painting. And um, I do love a lot of other mediums too, though. So uh, again, I'm going to have some watercolor videos coming. Now, why am I adding this lighter? Or I guess I should have said, why did I add the darker if I'm just going to put lighter on top of it? Well, this lighter pastel right now is not going to have the contrast or value difference unless I had put the dark down first. So again, we typically work darker to lighter. It doesn't mean black to white. It just means whatever that item is or subject matter is, go a tad darker um, before you add the lights. Now, why did I not do that to these lower flowers? Well, they're not the focal point. I don't want them to have as much contrast. So, and specifically the ones I'm working on right now, they're way far away. Okay, they're little. You can tell. That's another focal point strategy is um, size. All right, here we go with the footage I told you. I have no idea what happened to my camera and why it got out of focus, but I'm speeding it up because there's not much to see. But now you can see I, I added on top of some of what I already did and it does get back in focus soon. But here's a consolation and my flower drawing tips. All right, so here is your replacement footage for the fact that part of the regular footage was a bit blurry because of my head getting in the way. So I'm going to show you real quickly how to render flowers, draw and paint flowers. Uh, I think it's a lot easier with this method I'm going to show you. And also I'm going to give you a little bit more of a close up on how to paint these cute little bees. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm going to use these flowers in these actual paintings to show you a way that I think it's a lot easier to paint flowers. This is just a piece of willow charcoal. It's a little wider than it is tall. But for this sunflower, rather than me um, trying to draw the sunflower like this, okay, we probably would do the center. And then we most likely, let me darken things up a bit here. We most likely would start focusing. This is how I used to draw and paint things. We would focus on every petal. Okay, one's up here, one's coming out here. Oh, let me see. One's coming in kind of behind it. Um, then, you know, you get the idea. You know, drawing all of the petals rather than the method that I'm gonna show you now. And it ends up looking, I don't know, not as correct. So that's one method of drawing a sunflower. Now here's another method. What we could do, I'm just looking again at my painting here, is we could get an idea of where the main part of the flower is. It's kind of like right here, not quite in the center. It's a little bit over to the side. 
And um, of course we've got, it's a darker center. Okay, so we got, this is just to get the, the idea of where it is. And now I notice that the petals of the flower, if they're almost facing forward, right? They're almost like the flower's looking at you, but it's um, turned down a little bit. So instead of doing the petals, I'm going to do an ellipse based on where the flower is. An ellipse is just a circle. It can be a circle that's straight at you, angled, you know, or how a flower is turned. So here, I've done this a little bit big, but here is the different way to do it. Do, go ahead and do the ellipse, and then you kind of have a guide. Now, they don't have to go exactly um, in the, um, the circle. They can come out of it a little, but you've kind of given yourself a little range of where to um, do your petals. And then you can kind of start looking at um, the shapes of them, the directions of them, and, um, and you know, focus on kind of the energy. So, and petals usually, they start out thinner here. I'm not doing a very good drawing of a flower. They start out thinner and get wider, typically. You know, you gotta examine the different varieties of flowers. So, and um, as you could see, this was the first in the nine series, but, um, you know, I give a lot of instruction in that too. And then some of these come out and come down, but you can see that that method is a lot easier and it's going to look a lot a lot more like a real sunflower because that's how flowers grow you know there is um kind of a pattern a circular pattern to them so that's one method if the flower is facing towards you all right now let's look at this next one the one that we're working on in this video it is a cone flower. Uh, is it also called echinacea? You guys, you're so great to correct me when I get names of flowers wrong. Okay, but it's got a big old kind of like a, almost like a triangle type of shape cone to it with the cute little bee on the top. And then let's say we'll, we're going to do the, the, this method of drawing or painting the flower. And I'm looking at all the leaves. Now you do get better the, the more you do this. I'm looking at all the petals um, coming out, not leaves, but petals coming out. And I'm going to do them um, you know, kind of freehand, um, just going to the different um, ending points that I think might be right, you know. And, I, you know, it, you can make it work this way. That's fine. But I find it's much easier. Now, this one's going to have to be smaller. Um, I find it's much easier to do this ellipse method. All right. Now, what is the shape of this particular flower? Okay. It's not facing forward like this one. What is happening here? If we look at this flower, it's an ellipse, but the, the flower is turned more this way, looking that way. I always say they're looking, um, but it's an ellipse more like, let me look at it again, more like, see the petal's gonna be shorter back here, more like this, it's coming around, okay? So this is more of the shape. Now these petals can come down a little bit longer, but what that's gonna do, it's gonna give you the guide as to where these petals are. If you looked at the reference photo on this, once again, I'm sharing the reference images um, in a link in every video. It's not my photograph, so I'm not gonna plop it up here like it's my photograph, but it's, um, it's available in the link. Okay, so see what I'm doing? I'm coming out, I'm having to look back at this, and matching it up to the ellipse that I drew, all right? So this ends up looking much more like a real cone flower. Um, I guess you could say perspectively and um, anatomically, do you say? Yeah, that's the right word, I think. Um, then this one will, okay? So I hope you can see that. I hope I'm doing this dark enough for you to see. So you see now that this is going to end up looking much more uh, accurate, that's a good word, um, than this method or this method. Okay, let's do one more and then we'll get to some bees. All right, let's try this one. This one is uh, one of the upcoming videos and it's, I think it's like daisies, Black Eyed Susans maybe. And the flowers had some different gestural quality. And one of them in the back where that bee is, is even the petals are reaching up even in front of that middle section. So let's take a look at that. Okay, we've got one at the bottom. Now, I'm not gonna do the wrong way here. I'm gonna do the method that I'm suggesting. We've got one here down at the bottom, and uh, I always kinda like to get the little center part in first. And I noticed it was, um, its ellipse was more like 
kind of turned, mm, not straight up, maybe a little bit of an angle. And so I'm gonna give its little ellipse like this, okay? Let's go ahead and get all of them in first. And there was one that is up a little higher up here, maybe right about here, okay? And the way this flower was, was almost straight up and down. It's a little bit bigger than the other one. So its ellipse is a little bit more like this, okay? And I'm drawing the ellipse out to where I think the petals will end. Now this little guy that was up here, um, it had its center like here and it's smaller and its ellipse, each of the petals is kind of coming up and around, but in front of, I'll do it a little bigger than it is there, okay? The top petals are above the center section, all right? So I'm gonna draw all these in a minute. This one over here was kind of um, reaching a little bit this way. See how I did that ellipse? And then there was a little guy down here that um, it was angled a little bit more like this, all right? I'm not doing them the same sizes as they are in the image. And I actually almost have, what I hate to do is a, a pattern here. Look, I've got four with one in the middle. They look like flying saucers right now. Um, so ignore that, it's much better in the painting, but this will make it uh, perhaps easier for you to see. Now with this little one, I'm gonna make those centers darker. Now let's do this little one. Okay, I know that the stem of this one is kind of, uh, by the way, with your stems, I'll go ahead and give you a quick lesson here. Usually they're coming right underneath the flower somewhere. Don't do stems like, okay, or even curvy, all right? It's better to do a stem, give harder pressure and lighter pressure and a real like, like gestural feel. Lighter and harder, okay? They look a, a lot more, uh, realistic that way. Often we don't see the whole stem as one thick stem. The light is casting and reflecting, so that's usually better. Okay, let's get to this flower now. Um, the petals are gonna be coming up in the back here, okay? They're coming up from the back, and some of these are coming up from the front. They're covering that little center part. I hope you could follow that there. Okay, so, and you could paint this with the correct values to represent that even better. Okay. And here I'm speeding up the rest of the little petals filling in the ellipses that I had previously drawn, but can you see how that really helps? Now I'll slow this down a bit for you. This is a piece of Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. I've just put two colors down, you know, keeping it simple. I'm going to use five colors and values. A dark, this is the Terry Ludwig dark, but if you don't have this color, just use the darkest dark you have. And by the way, it's better when you're doing, these are going to be on top. I add them last. So you want your pastel to be a soft pastel, preferably. The next color you'll need will be something that's kind of a rusty color. It can lean a little bit more towards red if you like. Um, I'm putting down a few different options. That second one was a little too dark. Um, so it's just something kind of orangey or rusty colored and not too light of a value. Remember, we work dark to light and that's why I put the dark down. I'm gradually getting lighter. The next color will be kind of a yellowy orange, but you want it to be bright and a little bit lighter than the rusty color. It can even be lighter than the one that I used here, just kind of a bright yellow. I'm trying another one here. That one's probably too dull. Um, so brighter, lighter in color, but not super light in value. And the next color is going to be a base for the wing, okay? The wings are gonna be the lightest thing, but as we always, oh, I was testing a color there. As I always talk about, you need a dark for the light to rest upon. So I'm gonna use something, yeah, even as dark as that, wouldn't have to be that dark in value, but a blue color. And that blue is gonna be the base for the wing so that I can put this lighter value, you can hardly see it on the um, paper that I have on my board, but the lighter value is gonna rest upon that blue. So we got five colors, one, two, three, four, five. I know you can hardly see the lightest value. Those are gonna be the five colors for our B. Use something similar to that if you don't have the exact colors, but if you get the values right, you should be good to go. 
And here we go. Once again, working dark to light. You can do either two or three body parts. A bee actually does have three segments to their body. But I find if the bees are super teeny, it's best to do two. It's almost like it's overkill. See the little ones, how they just have like two little black marks? And then you add your little rust color that you saw me add. And then you add your little golden color. And the rust kind of acts as a nice background. And obviously we're adding the little rust and then the golden right behind the head. And all it has to be is a little simple mark. I find the simpler the better with this. Now again we're going to need a little darker value base. That's the blue that the wing is going to or the light part of the wing is going to rest upon. You can make these in little V shapes but don't make them too cliche. You know sometimes I'll make the wings going down even. I think I made them all kind of going up here. And even if they're not perfect it's all right. These bees are in motion. They're supposed to be energetic and moving. And you could also add a little indication of feet or antenna if you like, but make sure you do this with a very thin mark and a gestural stroke. All right, we are back to the lesson. I apologize again for the out of focus footage, but uh, now we can get back to this bee. Now I thought this bee looked like a flower hugger. He was really curved over top of that middle part of the flower. And uh, I'm doing the same strategy, but this bee is actually larger and he's not in motion. So I'm giving him just the areas of dark in the little bands that it would be. And I've sort of been playing around with his shape and getting enough of that flower underneath him um, to get the, uh, the gestural feel and the curve of his back. So, but it's the same idea. I'm getting down, you see here how in the previous bees I used a rust color, but here I'm using kind of an orange color. So as long as you have a little bit of a darker value before laying down the golden color, you should be good. I also find the less you fiddle with these things, the better they start to get um, muddied very quickly. So don't get frustrated if things don't seem to come out the way you want them to at first. We all get better. It is definitely a journey and as I always say and I'm saying this to myself because I did not do this, I have learned that we need to appreciate the experience more than the final product. Often I know we want to create something, we want to show it, we want to share it and you know just say hey look at what I've done but that takes a while <laughs> and so don't get frustrated if your beginning attempts are not so great. Certainly mine were not. I can't tell you how many paintings I have thrown away but like I said before this is all learnable. So the more you have fun the more you will be a successful artist because that's part of the success is enjoying this journey. Now for this bee's wings I wanted it to be a darker base like we talked about before, then the background. So I chose this purple. The marks were kind of thin, but that's okay. And then I will add the lighter on top of that. So I fiddled around with this painting a little more, added some lighter greens, some warmer greens, and kind of refined the flowers. So I hope you enjoyed this experience and learned something. And if you're a patron of mine or someone just following along with this video, please tag me on all of the social media platforms so I can see what you create. All right, guys, as always, happy painting. <laughs>